Was that dramatic? <laughs> was that dramatic enough for you? Do you, do you? Are you like me, like when you see some of those thumbnails and it's like, I'm leaving this office. No, no, but seriously, <laughs> it always cracks me up. But anyway, listen, I had three critical mistakes on my Natalie 4D um, product review, and I'm here for you all. So I say this without any pride whatsoever, and I'm and I'm happy about the mistakes coming to light because now I can educate you all on things to look out for when setting up your Nanoleaf 4D. So three critical errors that I had in that review. The first was during the setup uh, period. This was my first Nanoleaf uh, product uh, use, and so during the setup, you have to select the four corners of the product and you have to put them into place. Now, what I did was I did the top left corner and I adjusted that one, moved the dial, etc. but I didn't adjust the other three. And so that could have caused or did cause some color accuracy issues when it came to the 3D and 4D vivid mode and cinema mode. And you couldn't tell it as much in the cinema mode because it's not as overly saturated, but you could see it in the vivid mode. And so there were some of you commenting that it doesn't do that good of a job following the things on screen and that was partially due to my fault and so I wanted to make sure that I pointed out for one to be aware of it if you've never used a Nanoleaf product like myself and you know I kind of read the directions one way and they were meant a, diff a different way and so that's completely me user error the second thing was the camera mount so the camera mount gives you a lot of flexibility to mount the camera in the angle that you need to based on your environment because it has this counterweight on the back end of it which allows you to mount that camera however you wanted to and it was pointed out to me by one of the uh, folks over at Nanoleaf that I had it too vertical and perhaps because it was vertical it goes into the you know into one of the things later because it was too vertical it was not picking up exactly everything as it should on the television and so I had to go and I mounted the camera less vertically and more horizontally so that now it picks up specifically the TV and it has a better view of the TV which now produces more accurate colors and I'm going to show you this in a second and so that was really really good for me to see so that I understood um, you know first the error of the four corners and then two the horizontal versus more vertically or a 45 degree angle um, like setup that I had for the camera I just want to interrupt this video for a quick second. Make sure you stay to the end because I'm going to do about two to three minutes of straight uh, video of the product. But I want to make sure that you get an understanding of what three things I had to address or I had to look at um, that affected the last video. So stay tuned, watch to the end, see all the video footage at the end. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so that brings me to 2.5 going into three, right? The height or verticality of the camera mount picks up information in the background and so because it's a camera it sees everything and so if you have it mounted really high like that it saw the red wood or the red cedar wood of my IKEA tabletop and so it added more red into the picture because there was red being seen in the camera now that's only part of it and that's why I say 2.5 going into 3 because the third part of that is the saturation levels are very very high when I say saturation I mean color saturation is very very high in the vivid mode that's why it was more apparent that the red was there inaccurately in the black scenes than in the cinematic mode because the saturation isn't as high and that's I guess what led to my preference over the of the custom um, setting as opposed to the vivid setting. You could change the dynamic level which is how bright it gets and then you could change the saturation level which is how much of the color is present. So a combination of those three things which were the inaccurate corners from my original setup, the height or verticality of the camera as well as it seeing the screen or seeing the the tabletop of my TV st uh, stand below adding in a little bit more red than was necessary along with the application or the firmware side of having that saturation point set in the um, in the vivid and cinematic modes and so they're they are well aware of that and they are working on that actively to give you the best possible video and so before any of you ask it I'm going to, before any of you ask it why would they put out a product that's not complete well, it's because it's the best way to do it in 2023. And what I mean by that is they follow what's called a product management development life cycle. Um, the old method was 
give a timeline. I have a year to build a product and I'm going to think about it. I'm going to test it and then I'm going to release it. And that's the final product and you get it, you like it or you hate it. And that's the end of it. Whatever hits the market, you get it and you deal with it. Product management, on the other hand, releases what's called a minimal viable product, which is the bare essentials of the product that gives you the value that you're looking for. In this case, a TV light strip that gives you four different ways to view the television and gives you the most pop and color and accurate colors. From there, they're going to iteratively release updates to the software that will improve the product over time through its life cycle until they will do what's called sunset the product, meaning until they get rid of that product and replace it with another one. The reason they do it is because folks like yourselves who commented on my last video and comment in their application or on their website, they read those reviews and then from there they can determine what they need to do to improve the product. So it is very vital that you all take part in these videos, especially like the ones where we partner with brands and things like that, because they read your comments and then they take that information back to their product teams and they look to impl implement the changes or they look at you know the feedback that you've shared to see if there's anything that they can do to update the product. They are actively working on this and I'm so excited to be a part of that conversation, uh, to share feedback and for you all to share feedback on this video. And then I'm going to leave the other video up because I think it's vital for you to see the difference that those three tweaks made to my setup versus the original video. And then I'm going to do another video when the firmware updates come out and you can adjust, you know, or, or whatever, whatever changes they make, um, if you can adjust or not adjust, or if they change the set point and different things like that and saturation, whatever they end up doing when the next version of the firmware come out, I'm going to do another video. But I know I've rambled for a lot, so hopefully you stay to the end to see this updated video. So. Um, but yeah, let's jump into it. Let's do some gaming. Let's do some cinema. Let's do some some 4K video response stuff on the screen. And then we're going to call it quit. So I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy the explanation. Please let me know if you have any questions. Again, I do this for you all. And so it, I'm not prideful or anything like that. I'm trying to give you all the best possible information to make your decisions. And if I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong. And if, uh, you know, if something comes up and it's new to me, I'll make sure I share it with the group. And very often I'll say, hey, can I pin this comment to the top? I want to make sure the community sees it. So I'm here for you all. I love doing this. So let me know your thoughts and your comments. I'm going to leave us with the video. Uh, the video footage. So as always, stay cozy in that crazy world and I will see you in the next video. Peace.